Okay, today we'll be talking about health and safety. Next slide. Um, there, there are certain protocols that, that people that are working in, in other people's homes that are, are representing that they uh, know something about health, health and safety. Uh, there are certain protocols that you have to follow. And basically, um, if, you, if you're a uh, uh, BPI, which is the Building Performance Institute, if you're a building a BPI analyst, which uh, which you would have to be in order to take advantage of a lot of the programs that are offered to homeowners um, if they have their house audited, if it's an older house, um, then you have to be trained and be tested on giving them giving the homeowners some some real basic safety principles to follow. Um, Indoor air quality tests are required to be completed for buildings re regardless of size or number of units. Um, tests for carbon monoxide in the air, eliminate sources of carbon monoxide, and test at audit and post inspection. So how that works is uh, we would go to people's houses and we would uh, uh, run a blower door test and in some cases we'd run a duct blaster test to see how tight their house was. We take information on uh, on their windows, their insulation in the walls and in the attic. Uh, we would uh, we would uh, take some other measurements of you know to get the volume of the house, uh, the the size of the of each floor, to be able to put some some information into a computer program that we use that would that would uh, prioritize based on payback what things they should do to fix their house. But while we were there, we also had to give them some kind of basic safety information. So, so we would test the carbon monoxide levels just uh, in 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 the home in different a couple of different areas of the home, and then we would test the carbon monoxide levels uh, uh, at the uh, if they had a gas uh, I don't want to say stove uh, oven. If they had a gas oven, we'd turn the oven on and leave it on for a few minutes and then test the air around there to see if that it had too much carbon monoxide. And we'd also go into what's called the, uh, the uh, CAS zone, which is the com combustion appliance zone. You'll need to know that. Um, the combustion appliance zone is the, is the area where they have their furnace and their hot water heater. Um, and we would have to test a couple of things in this in this area. We'd have to test for carbon monoxide. We'd have to test uh, to see how well, um, how much uh, how much unburned fuel was in the exhaust to see if their if their appliances, their uh, furnace or hot water heater uh, was was operating efficiently. And we'd also have to test for gas leaks. Um, we have a little uh, monitor that we'd use to test for gas leaks that we'd run along all the gas pipes and uh, we'd find gas leaks in a surprising number of, of homes. And so what our responsibility was, because we're not from the gas company and we can't you know, make them do anything really, is depending on how, uh, how much carbon monoxide was in the home and, and how big the gas leaks were, uh, we would either, uh, what we would do is, is we would, uh, we carried around some red duct tape and we'd, we'd mark where the gas leak was and we would uh, uh, advise the homeowner to call the gas company to have that taken care of. And some of them were big enough and it was dangerous enough that we'd wait um, until they actually called them and in a couple cases we'd wait until the gas company actually came because we were worried about you know the, the the safety of the home. So we couldn't represent that we could fix the problem and uh, we couldn't represent that we could really quantify how bad the problem was and what, what it would do to them but if there was a problem then we had a responsibility to kind of tell them tell them that they should get it taken care of. So. That's, that's uh, in essence what, what an auditor, uh, which you know if, if you carried on with this and were interested in this and got your certification and were able to go into people's homes and do this, 
there's uh, some basic safety measures that, that you have to look at. Next slide, um, this is a, uh, um, a sheet that we'd use to uh, test the, the combustion safety, uh, mostly in the, in the CAS or the combustion appliance zone. And as you can see here, we'd measure for the water heater and the furnace and boiler and other might be a, a gas, <coughs> excuse me, a, a gas uh, oven or a fireplace or a uh, wall-mounted gas burning heater, uh, other, other items that could produce uh, carbon monoxide or, or, or uh, you know, would, would, uh, would maybe not burn the gas as efficiently as it should and, and leave a bunch of uh, unburned gas uh, that, that could be unhealthy for the residents. So, so we take an initial carbon monoxide reading, ambient, and, uh, and ambient would be anywhere in the house, CAS would be in the combustion appliance zone. And then after five to ten minutes of having the appliance on, uh, spillage, how that was measured is uh, uh, if you look at your hot water heater, it has a little cap on top of it. Um, and the, that cap funnels the exhaust gases into your flue. Um, what we would do is we'd take smoke and we would put that around that cap to see if the, the, if the smoke went into the flue or was pushed out of the flue. Then we could tell whether uh, there, were, there were pressure issues that were preventing that flue from working properly. So we'd do that first. If it failed that, then we, we would actually measure the pressure inside the flue as compared to the, as compared to the uh, combustion appliance zone to see if there are any problems of, of, uh, uh, that could lead to flame rollout or, or flu gas spillage or something like that. So uh, we'd see what, what kind of draft was, uh, was generated in the flu uh, and mark that down. Uh, we'd also check for gas leaks and, um, and the temperature uh, and also, uh, the temperature in the stack and also, uh, if there is flame rollout, you can tell quickly because um, it's it's all rusted uh, right around where you would if you if you lit a pilot light right around where that would be at the bottom of the hot water heater. So we we go through this checklist, we we check it all out, and then if there were uh, problems, then. And, uh, and they weren't so serious that they needed to, you know, shut the gas line off or, or have, have the gas company called, then we would, uh, uh, we would help them throughout their project to make sure that they replaced the, the, uh, the items that were working inefficiently. And sometimes that was as simple as cleaning your stove because it just wasn't uh, uh, cleaning your oven because it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't clean and it wasn't burning efficiently. And sometimes it'd be, you know, replacement of the whole appliance, whether that be an oven or a furnace or a, a gas water heater or whatever. Uh, these are the action levels. Uh, if you take the carbon monoxide and, and you measure it, and it's between zero and 25 parts per million, and, uh, and your flues are working properly, then you proceed with the work. And then as you can see, you have to take uh, uh, more and more stringent measures depending on how, how, uh, how concentrated the carbon monoxide was. Uh, if, if you turn on almost any gas oven and take a carbon monoxide reading right away, it will be in the 600 range. It will be, you know, really uh, dangerous. But as the as it warms up and and works for a few minutes, then it will go down to, you know, hopefully below 25, somewhere around there, um, if 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 everything's working properly. I have been in basements that were, you know, off the charts. Just I had a, a meter and it would just beep if it got bad, and it would just beep like crazy and and we'd, we'd feel like we were kind of getting a headache. I don't know if that was psychological or if we were really uh, 
uh, having problems based on this carbon monoxide, but we'd get out of there, we'd inform the, the uh, homeowner they needed to turn it off and, uh, and get somebody in there to fix it. So because it was an unsafe situation. Do you always call the gas company when you have a gas line? If you have a gas leak, yeah. Who runs the gas line? Gas company. It well, wasn't actually no. Um, the the uh, the gas line is usually run by a plumber. Mm -hmm. But uh, but if you smell a gas leak, then you then yeah, you call the gas company. So if it's outside, then that's their line anyway. No, it's outside. It's a, a gas line that was ran for a barbecue. Oh, yeah, but that's you yours. Always smell gas right there when that's going Yeah, so there are a couple of ways to, to test that. If you have a meter, you can obviously test it and find out, you know, if it's leaking. But uh, one easy way of testing that is to get a soap solution. Um, yeah. Yeah, you just get you know some dish soap, put a little bit of water in it, and you just kind of paint it over where you think the leak is, find out where it's bubbling, mark that, and then uh, then you have a plumber, or somebody knows what they're doing, fix it. So um, uh, remember that soap solution thing. That's one of your questions on your test you're having tomorrow. I mean next time. Okay. How much those meters cost? Uh, mine cost about 200 bucks. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, you know we use it as kind of a first step. You run it along the gas line, it starts beeping, and then we put some soap on it, or you know some of them you can actually feel or you can smell if you get it close to it, and uh, then you you know advise the people to get it taken care of. Uh, As we get buildings more and more airtight, then uh, things like gas leaks and carbon monoxide become more of a problem than they would have been if, if the home was still leaky. So if we're coming in, into these people's houses and we're telling them that they should, you know, do some caulking and they should get new windows and they should do all these things to make their house tighter, um, and they've got you know gas leaks and, and problems that are going to be accentuated by them doing what we tell them to do, then that's a problem. So that's that's the reason that we need to you know be really careful um, to uh, to not make the problem worse by making the house tighter. So uh, negative pressure. We've talked all about what what kinds of things flame roll out. Uh, uh, smoke, smoke coming into your house from your fireplace rather than than up the chimney, um, that sort of thing that that that, uh, that can happen if you have too much negative pressure in your house. Um, so, uh, and the reason sometimes we have to deal more with negative pressure. We talked about the problems with positive pressure in our in our climate. Uh, you know, uh, pushing moist air into the walls and having it condensed there is kind of the biggest one that 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 makes it a better idea to use exhaust ventilation than than supply ventilation in your house. Um, but if you if you want to ventilate your house and you want to use your bathroom fans or some kind of a whole house fan where it's only pulling out of your house, then you're going to run into some other problems if you have combustion equipment like a fireplace or a, an old furnace or a, an old water heater. Next slide um, talks about the, the things that can happen with water heater that we've discussed already. Backdraft is, is when uh, this, uh, this draft-based flu, atmospherically drafting flu, uh, there's so little pressure in the room that it's pulling the air backwards. And so you have all this combustion, uh, these combustion fumes going into your, into your, uh, into your home uh, where they can harm people. Also flame rollout and, and spillage of, of, uh, of the flue gas. Okay, flue gas is made up of uh, carbon dioxide which won't kill you, unless that's all you have, right? 
uh, carbon monoxide, which will kill you. Sulfur dioxide is bad. Oxygen, nitrous oxide, water vapor, and smoke. Um, what what things if you're burning uh, if you're burning natural gas and it's working correctly and it's 100% efficient, what two things would you suppose would would be coming out of your flue gas? Anybody know? Everything's working perfectly. You you burn uh, natural gas and what are the byproducts of that? Carbon dioxide, right? Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide means that that things aren't burning correctly. And what's the other one? No, no. Sulfur dioxide is 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 uh, another uh, product of incomplete combustion. So you should have carbon dioxide and water. That's it. Um, but uh, uh, so so a uh, a combustion appliance that's working correctly should be spewing out carbon dioxide that's that's uh, more humid than a, than uh, than dirty, right? Should just have water in it. Um, but uh, what we monitor in flue gas is all these things um, because uh, because especially in older homes a lot of these uh, a lot of these combustion appliances just aren't burning efficiently. So you have air and fuel. Pay attention to uh, how much oxygen is in air. Anybody know what that is? Without looking, should be right around 21 percent. Is is uh, if you you know if I took a sample of this air, it should be 21 percent oxygen. So and that's uh, that's a safe level of oxygen for us to breathe uh, without having without having problems. The bad part about carbon monoxide is it uh, it it tricks our bodies into. Uh, absorbing that into our bloodstream instead of oxygen and then we're oxygen deprived and that's that's how we're poisoned by it. So this is how it works. You have air coming in that's that's 21 percent oxygen, has a little bit of other stuff in it and uh, most of the rest of it is nitrogen and you, you put in fuel um, that, that should be uh, carbon and hydrogen, that's why they call fuel hydrocarbons, hydrocarbon based. Um, but sometimes it has some of this other stuff in it that, that causes some problems. Um, and then in the off gas we have uh, carbon dioxide, which we should have, water vapor, which we should have, and a bunch of other stuff that we probably shouldn't have. Carbon dioxide originates from incompletely Oxidized burnt carbon. It's dangerous because of the absorption. It, it uh, prevents or actually takes the place of the oxygen and as it absorbs in the bloodstream. And uh, some reasons why carbon monoxide forms is uh, you don't have right or the right venting, or you have a rich fuel mixture, which means there's too much fuel for the amount of heat or the amount of uh, combustion that's happening. And so not all of the all of the fuel combusts because you either don't have enough venting or for some reason it's not it's not pulling through it's pulling through faster than the flame can burn it and so uh, and so you end up with some byproducts like carbon monoxide or too early cooling of the flame flames are supposed to be that hot apparently. So uh, some carbon monoxide sources, fuel burning furnaces and hot water heaters, boilers, uh, space heaters, kitchen ranges, and, and the space heaters that you mostly need to be concerned with are the fuel burning ones, meaning not the electric space heaters, um, but uh, the gas burning or propane burning or some sort of fuel burning uh, space heaters. 
I remember when I was a little kid, we had a uh, a really drafty house, and one Christmas we got a, a little propane uh, a burner, uh, not a burner, but a propane heater, and we put that in the middle of the living room, and, and you know it get colder in the winter, and so you get closer and closer to it, and and uh, until you had kind of a headache, and then you kind of move farther away from it, and then you get closer to it. And, Anyway, I probably did a lot of damage to myself, so so uh, don't do that. Uh, there's there's no good reason for having unvented combustion appliances in your home. When people go camping and they, they put them in tents, is it because they don't have enough ventilation? That's why they, I mean, you hear a lot of that's why they get sick and die. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's not ventilation. In the yeah, yeah. Which takes us back to the uh, to Ma and Pa Ingalls. If I remember right, they had a they had a fire burning right in the middle of their of their like bottom floor that they'd cook on and stuff and heat the home with. You know, no wonder they had so many problems. Luckily, they their house is so poorly built that they had a lot of ventilation, so it was pretty much outside anyway. But but yeah, over the years there have been a lot of needlessly, um, a lot of lives cut short because of, you know, improper ventilation, burning stuff inside, you know. But you know, you get cold and you need to get warm, and and so, anyway, a little education doesn't hurt. Kitchen ranges, auto emissions, fireplaces, um, uh, tobacco smoke. All carbon monoxide sources. It's uh, odorless, it's colorless, and it's tasteless, and uh, it mixes well in the air. It doesn't stratify. That means it doesn't matter whether you plug your carbon monoxide meter in down low or up high, because it it uh, it doesn't settle at the bottom or move to the top of a room. It, it just mixes in with the air, um, and it just will follow the airflow. So, and it's poisonous. These are some of the things that it can do to you at different levels. Um, around 400, it starts to affect you fairly uh, soon. One to two hours, it, you'll get a headache. Um, if you double that, sickness, twitching of limbs, and uh, you can see that you know when it's really strong, it can kill you in in three minutes. So, uh, the 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 most that I have ever read, well, I think my meter only went to about a thousand, so that's probably about the most that I've ever read. And then we just got out of there. I I never really knew how how high the level was in that person's home. Okay, so uh, when you're testing for carbon monoxide, this is on the next slide. You sample at the entry of the home. You sample around all unvented appliances. You sample b before the draft diverter, which would be right here, of atmospheric appliances and anywhere else where you would expect uh, to find carbon monoxide. This little uh, this little hat thing is the draft diverter, which is supposed to take take the uh, take the flue gases, funnel them into the flue, and take it away. So uh, we talked about the different kinds of furnaces. There are atmospheric or national, natural draft uh, furnaces, and they're in the 60 to 70 percent efficient category. There are induced draft furnaces, which is the 80 percent category. And make a, make a note of that, that uh, an 80 percent furnace is the only one that has an induced draft. Uh, which means basically that the draft is uh, of, of an 80% furnace is pushed rather than uh, relying on atmospheric venting. Does that make sense? So it has a little fan in it. And um, well, it can't be sealed up because it needs air from the room. You're, you're talking about a hot water heater, right? The reason it can't be sealed up is because it needs air from the room to use for combustion. Does that make sense? 
yeah, underneath, and then it needs air from the room to provide a carrier for the draft going up the up the chimney or up the up the flue. So, so uh, and same goes for furnaces. So the old furnaces work that way too, where they have you know the little cap thing and then it goes up. But if you go to an 80% furnace, it has induced draft, which means that they seal that up and they put a fan in there to, to carry the flue away or carry the, the bad gas away. And then a power draft, um, so if it's induced draft, it creates a negative pressure in the flue. Power draft, it creates a positive pressure in the flue. And then a 90 uh, a 90% or greater furnace would be condensing, which means all the combustion is sealed, which means the combustion air is piped in a PVC pipe, comes to the furnace, and then it burns it so efficiently that it can send the off gases through a pipe, uh, a PVC pipe, back outside. So, and the only, the only thing that should be coming out of that pipe is a little bit of water and some carbon dioxide. Um, so. Uh, yeah, make a note that the 80% is the only uh, is the only one of the three furnaces that that has a, um, a forced draft, induced draft, or a power draft. So, induced draft and power draft are both 80%. Yeah, yeah. If they have a fan on there, it's either pushing or pulling. To get the uh, to get the, uh, the the air out, then it's an 80% furnace. And then when you go to a 90, you have you provide your own combustion air, so you don't need to have a big hole in in the room where you have your furnace. Does that make sense? So when you're talking about your friend, that's why he had that big hole is because he had a furnace that was 80%, and and so he needed some air to come into that room to provide combustion air. So that was his, his big hole that he had going into the attic. Okay. Next slide, combustion gas leak detection. Um, that's the unit, it's pretty close to the one that I have. You just run around, run along the gas pipes and it beeps if you have a gas leak. Spillage, flame rollout, and backdrafting. You can see the burnt area at the bottom of this what is that thing, a boiler maybe? Um, you can see the, uh, the burnout area there. So if you look at your hot water heaters at home, or if you have a boiler, I don't think any of you said that you do. But if you look at your hot water heaters at home and it looks like that around where the flame is, then uh, you've got problems with depressure, depressurization uh, around that, in that room. And you should make sure that you know you you take care of that somehow. Um, so another couple of slides about testing for carbon monoxide. This is a 70% furnace, I think. Um, you can tell because it's so old, number one, and because it looks like you could see through and see the flame. I'm not sure if this is on or not, but it's it's probably a 70% furnace. Um, so you, you uh, yeah, it's 70 percent because he's he's sticking the, uh, the the carbon monoxide detector right into the flame, right into where the the uh, off gases are are starting to form. Okay, this next slide testing the draft. Um, Looks like this is the this is the flue pipe from the hot water heater, and this is the flue pipe from probably the furnace. They come together through the into this chimney, and then go out the house. Um, so, you know, people do a lot of crazy stuff with their uh, with their furnaces and hot water heaters, and uh, and a lot of it's not very safe. So this is probably a, a pretty unsafe condition because they're. They're putting it into a chimney that's great big, and uh, and they probably never get enough air to really pull a vacuum in that chimney, so that their flue gases are probably just sitting around. Uh, testing draft, 
you see that there, this is the little cap over the hot water heater. They're testing the pressure in this flue pipe to make sure that it's more negative than in the room to make sure that the, the, the air is being drawn up that flue. Uh, condensing furnaces, these are the ones that, uh, that have the PVC pipe and they say, you know, drill a hole in the PVC pipe, but, but people would get really, really mad at you if you drilled a hole in the PVC pipe. So if, if you test them at all, you'd test them at the outlet outside the house to make sure that the, uh, the carbon monoxide there is, is less than, than uh, 25. Uh, some other, some other uh, things, I, I talked to you about gas ovens and ranges, um, and this I guess is a hot pot that you make something with. Anyway, it's gas powered, so none of you have one of these, do you? Okay, don't worry about it then. Uh, range top CO testing, you see this person has a fan that's sucking the air that, that uh, is around the top of the range. Um, and a lot of people have fans there, but most of the fans just take the air, filter it, maybe, if the filter's ever been changed in the last 30 years. They filter the air and then they just shoot it right back into the house. So even with the filter, that's not going to help you with carbon monoxide or any of the other um, uh, dangerous compounds that would come as a result of incomplete combustion. So if you have a, if you have a vent, uh, make sure that it vents outside. If it doesn't vent outside, then uh, make sure that your house, you know, vents properly overall at least and make sure that your oven's clean.